Hey everyone, I'm coming at you with the lowdown on a couple of exciting new power features inside of Serum today. These are render and resample, and they were just released in one of the most recent versions, 1.06b8. So make sure you've got the freshest, most updated install of Serum to get access to these new bad boys. Basically, they're complete game changers in the way that you can build and construct complex sounds inside of Serum. For anybody who's building wavetables, and if you're not, you should, because that's really the core of what makes Serum an amazing synth, anyone who's making wavetables is going to freak out when they see the possibilities with these new features. What these are going to do for you is really simplify and streamline the way that you can make really incredible complex sounds in this synth. Normally, these types of things used to require complex external audio resampling using tracks and buses and a whole bunch of external insert effects. Now you can do this all without ever leaving Serum's interface. And I, for one, as a sound designer, am super stoked to present this to you. As always, we've got a free download of everything I cover in this video, so check the description below the video for a link for that. Also, a super juicy added bonus I wanted to throw in for you guys today is I've been doing a ton of sound design in preparation to release a pack of my own patches for Serum, and I've got a huge collection of my own personal custom wavetables, so I've decided to bundle those up for free with the download as well. You guys can add those to your library, get a whole bunch of fresh new sounds, new inspiration, and just add those to your sound design arsenal. So don't forget to check the description below, grab those, hope you guys like them. Let's get inside a serum now, shall we? In this video, we're going to cover what the new render and resample commands do in detail. We're going to go over some pro tips on how best to use them, and some of my favorite ways to get the most out of these epic new features. Let's start with render. You can find these new features under the menu, where it says render oscillator A warp, and render oscillator B warp. There's also the resample features down here, but we'll tackle those in just a sec. The release notes for version 1.06 B8 say, render oscillator A, B, takes the current wavetable frame and creates 256 frames spanning zero to 100% of the warp knob. Let's explore this by activating a warp mode. By default, Serum has its saw wave loaded up, and we're gonna choose the warp mode mirror. And what that's going to do is change the readout of that single cycle waveform. It's a nice sound. I like that one. So we're going to go to our menu and we're going to go render oscillator A warp. And what that's going to do is create from that single original frame, 256 frames. And each frame is going to be a different position with that warp knob. So that warp knob will have moved through the entire cycle of mirror. And now we can actually completely remove that warp mode. And if we take a look at the resulting wavetable, here's what we get. Just as if we had the warp mode engaged, but we're doing it all with the wavetable now. So we've already created a wavetable from a single cycle waveform, which is awesome in and of itself. But here's one of the additional power features. You can effectively stack warp modes to get more complex sounds. For example, if we add a second warp mode over top, like flip, check this out. We're going to add an LFO that will modulate that over a couple of bars. This has huge implications for wavetable design and opens the door to a whole new world of possibilities. I don't know about you, but my mind is running a mile a minute right now with what I can do with this new feature. So now let's hit up that second feature, Resample, and see what it does. If you jet up to the menu, you'll see Resample to Oscillator A and Resample to Oscillator B. The release notes say that this resample function effectively plays a note of the preset for one bar and captures it by rendering it to RAM then imports that back into Serum as a wavetable. So let's dig in and test this out. We'll grab a second instance of Serum, leaving this first one intact so you guys can check that out in the free download. Record arm it. And we're going to start with one of my own custom wavetables from that free library that I've included for you guys. We'll go to User, and we're going to grab one called Cerebro. 
It's a complex wavetable that has a lot of harmonics in it. I'm going to take LFO1. I'm going to map that to wavetable position, and we'll drop the time. Here's what it sounds like. So lots of harmonics, lots of sub. It's a great place to start for a bass. So the next thing I'm going to do is add oscillator B, and we're going to drag up bin 1 to make it a straight up sine wave. Then we're going to drop the level because I'm going to use oscillator B to FM oscillator A. So we're going to choose the warp mode here. And this is, again, one of the power features of Serum. I just love this. I can choose FM from B. Now I can play and dial in FM synthesis. Maybe for now I will bypass the LFO so we can have a static position. And that way you'll be able to hear the FM a bit better. So we really get a lot of gritty harmonics in there. Okay, I'll re-enable that LFO on the wavetable position. And then what I'm going to do is take that same LFO and get some really nice mod on that FM. Next up, we'll grab a filter. I'm going to go and slot in a notch filter. Notch 12. Give it a bit of drive. And we'll have that LFO also mod the cutoff. Drop our volume a bit. Here's a pro tip for you. And now this one's important. When Serum renders, it's going to grab a single bar. So make sure you set your LFO to BPM sync. And what I'm going to do is take it so that it is a single cycle of a ramp up. And effectively, that's going to take us from starting point, call it point A, to a finish, which is point B. And I find that's more effective than having multiple oscillations inside of a single cycle of the LFO, because that just gives you too much in the way of information for Serum to handle. I much prefer this nice, smooth transition. So here's what we have now. It's also useful to trigger the LFO so you know what it sounds like right from the start. Now we're going to go to the effects module and we're going to add in some master effects. We'll throw in a hyper. We're going to add some distortion. We'll choose the diode 2, mix up the drive a little bit, and throw it parallel in the mix. Now we're going to throw the flanger in there, drop the mix a bit. We'll throw the compressor on in multiband mode. And the EQ. We've lost a bit of sub in the signal, so I'm going to use that to boost up the low end with the low shelf at about 100 hertz. And we might take out a little bit of the highs from maybe 3K and up. Now we're ready to resample. We're going to go to menu and we're going to go resample to oscillator B. Now if we go back, we can see that it's created an entirely new wavetable in oscillator B. Let's save this wavetable and we'll call this one just a test in my test table section. And what that'll allow us to do is leave this version of Serum, and then we can load up a freshie. And we can listen to what that wavetable sounds like all on its own. So we'll go to test tables, test, and we can take a look at it. And let's just scan through that with the wavetable knob. So you can hear what that's done is it's grabbed not only that modulation on the wavetable, it's grabbed anything on the warping mode, it's grabbed the FM, it'll grab any unison voices, it'll of course convert those to mono because wavetables are in mono, but it also grabs the filter section, any other oscillators happening in there, the sub, the noise, oscillator B, 
and all of the master effects inside of Serum. That is absolutely epic. So now we're getting as our wavetable an ending point that we normally would have taken quite some time to get to in Serum, and now that's our fresh start point. So there's a couple things I like to do with my wavetables. This is another bit of a pro tip here. When you've imported some sounds in here, sometimes the sounds are different volumes. So if you scan through, you can see some of these aren't maxed out. One of the things I like to do is go normalize each gained separately. And what that's going to do is take each frame and push it right up to the top. The other thing we can do is go process crossfade edges 16 samples. And that's going to give us a little bit of a better shift through those wavetables. So let's check this out. Couple more tweaks and we're done. I'm going to go here and I'm going to remove some of the frames. I'm going to find a sweet spot in the wavetable in the editor. So around here. So from that frame, I'm going to go add remove and remove from the beginning to selected. And then I'm going to choose down here under multis. And I'm going to choose squareify, which is going to remove some of the harmonics. Give it a nice square sound. We'll go back and go through that normalization process again. And let's listen to what we have. So a totally different wavetable from where we started, integrating all of the different effects and capabilities of Serum. And now we can go ahead and save over that wavetable. And we can call that up in any future project. And we can do this over and over and over again. The creative possibilities here with internal resampling are really just unlimited. <laughs> Now, I promised some tips on how I've been getting the most out of this feature, and some of the new ways that I've been using this are to stack up layers of effects that I used to have to do with audio resampling outside of the synth. For example, I often add several layers of distortion in parallel with things like notch filters, EQ, and multiband compression at each stage of resampling. This got really complex, involving a mess of tracks and routing buses and layers to record all the new tracks at each stage. So forget all that. You can now do all of this inside of Serum. It's simply epic. Okay, let's recap what we covered today. We went through how you can use the render oscillator warp function to print oscillator warp modes and how to stack multiple warp modes on top of each other to get more complex sounds that you could never get with a single wavetable and oscillator. We also covered internal resampling using the resample to oscillator function and showed several examples of how you can use that in your bass sound design to get what you could only get before by doing a bunch of audio resampling with effects outside of Serum. I'm sure you're amped to start using these in your own music, and I'm stoked for you to try this out. So don't forget to grab my free Serum Wavetable collection in the text below the video, and I wish you guys the best of luck. If you like what we covered here today and you want to get deeper into Serum and your bass sound design, then come check out my Blitz Bass Sound Design Ultra Class. We go into all the ninja tricks and pro tips to make hard-hitting, heavily engineered bass for electronic music. I have a whole playlist of free videos on the course page back at my site, so click the link and check them out. All right, everybody, that's a wrap for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay frosty on all of our updates. And we'll catch you next time. Peace.